Absolutely wonderful. Hi. 21st. 21st of the 8th, 2013. We're going to be reading from the writings of Matthew today. Matthew and Son. Um, yes. We're going to start reading in Matthew 5. Matthew 5 and chapter 5. We're going to start reading at verse 11. Uh, blessed are you when, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you uh, falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the true prophets who were before you, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out, trampled underfoot by mere men of the street. Amen. So verse 11 says, Blessed are you when they... When they uh, revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely um, we must be clear that people are saying evil, if they're evil things we must be clear must have it right that um, uh, these people are saying evil against you falsely and then also the other criteria is it has to be for his name you with me? Jesus is in on this this is why they're at you it's not just you being a silly person, you know what I mean? It's not just me being a silly person and going out there and stirring people up and the gospel's not being preached, the truth's not being uh, revealed, the um, sleazebag church leaders aren't being exposed. We need to expose these sleazebags. We need to expose the liars and the false churches, false ministries, false teachers. This is part of the ministry of Christ. We contend, fight battle for the faith. We don't wrestle and battle against uh, homosexuality and sodomy and lesbians and, and same-sex marriage. We don't march down the street of that garbage. We, we just preach the word of God, proclaim the truth. It's all inclusive, amen? amen. All inclusive in there. If they want to go that way, let them go that way, but their wages will be damnation, amen? And the news uh, Monday night, the New Zealand people condoned the same-sex marriage. Everyone's jolly and rejoicing and everyone's happy. And as I said on the Sunday meeting, we're next. Australia is next and you can be as sure as the sun rose this morning, it's going to happen. And it's all part of the signs of the times, the downhill run, women with women, men with men, children rising up against their parents, uh, uh, lawlessness uh, abounding in every sector, the love of many growing cold towards Jesus, saying, oh, what the heck, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Everyone jumping in the same old hole, in the same old pit together in the name of Satan. Amen. So we can rejoice today that we have the truth, and it's the truth that sets us free. Mm -hmm. Speaking evil against you falsely, falsely, for my sake, yeah? It's for his, it, it's always it, for his sake, if you're going to be blessed, it has to be done in his name, it has to be correct, and they have to be false and you have to be true. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. At the bank. Now, in heaven, in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. In heaven. That's it. I'm not going to tell you like Jerry Saval and, and, and Jesse Supplanter, I mean Duplanters, and Benjamin Hinn, uh, who's being unhinged uh, daily, you know, by the truth. In heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets of old. So... We can rejoice that we're numbered with them when we speak the truth. Right? This message today was first published in Released 
preached and taught in March 2002. And isn't it strange? I mean, like, it, it's just so, so Jesus that last Sunday uh, on the 18th, I preached on virgin films. Uh, I mean, and when we hear this message today, it, it dovetails. It dovetails. Brother Wilson up on Bribe, uh was just recently listening to one of my 2005 messages. Um, once saved, but lost, out of the Firebrand series, 217. And he said, wow, you know, this is, um, this is relevant for the now. And he's getting, still feeding on that. So uh, our chief verse today... Our chief verse today is verse 13. You are the salt. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned again? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Okay? Once again, um, we're addressing uh, false, deceiving and dangerous doctrine of religious men and women in the organizations today and denominations once saved always saved or um, some like to label it uh, once saved cannot be lost i mean uh, brother wilson was uh, looking at he, he was listening to the message from 2005 um, out of the firebrand series only the other day a couple of days ago and 217, number 217 on the Firebrand list of audios, going back to 2005, um, eight years ago. And here we are ministering this today. And that subject of that 2005 message was once saved, always lost, basically. You know, once saved, um, <coughs> always saved, or once saved, cannot be lost. Which was titled, once saved, um, uh, um, but now lost. Okay. Once saved, but lost. So we're driving home that nail again about uh, our walk with the Lord. We have to walk circumspect before the Lord. We have to uh, walk carefully and humbly. And uh, we know that um, uh, we stand uh, only by the grace of God uh, through faith, okay? in the power of God. Yeah, so our scripture today says, you are, you are, you are. Talking to his disciples, he's talking to his disciples uh, here. If you look at uh, Matthew 5, 1, and seeing the multitude, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And then he opened his mouth and taught. He's teaching them. And then he got into the beautiful attitude and the beatitudes, yeah? And then he, he followed that up directly uh, with persecution and then he briefed his disciples um, that you're to rejoice exceedingly when uh, they come against you because your rejoicing is that you're partaking of the rewards of the prophets of old. And then he went straight into, you are the salt. And he basically tells us here, um, you know, we have to continue, which is a Romans 11.22. We have to continue. Okay? You are, my disciples, he says, are the salt of the earth. And we're going to look at that word salt uh, later on in the message. Okay? We're going to look at that. You are the salt of the earth but but if but if the salt loses its flavor hey oh that can't happen i mean that's impossibility salt loses its flavor you ever heard of salt losing its flavor hey i mean the lord tells us here what's possible and what's not possible hey and he tells us that we can lose our taste for Jesus. We can lose our desire for Jesus. We can become lukewarm. Hey? So, I ultimately believe when an honest person reads this scripture, 
of Matthew 5, 13, when an honest person reads this scripture, uh, they would no doubt understand that Jesus is saying to his disciples here, this was, this, this was one of the doctrines of Christ. Hey? Jesus is saying, this is, this is part of my doctrine. This is part of, of my teaching. Hey? Isn't that wonderful? That this is part of, of the doctrine of Christ we don't hear today. Because it, it doesn't pay financially to preach these kind of teachings of Jesus. Does it? Hey? But this is part of his doctrine. He was teaching his disciples. Is that right? Isn't that what, the, what we read? And he opened his mouth and taught them. Taught them what? He taught them verse 13. He taught them verse 12. He taught them verse 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. This is what he was teaching. And this is what true ministers teach. Amen? This is what true ministers teach. This is not the false ministers. False ministers don't teach this. So... Some time back, I, I, I listened to an Assembly of God leader talking about this scripture. And what I found when I listened to him was there was four points I noticed as he ministered Matthew 5.13. Um, he said that Christians are, are, are salt, yes. And, and if we lose our flavour, we are no longer good for the work of the ministry. Hey? How flaky. It, we, it, by the looks of it, we're still saved. But we're just no good for ministry anymore. This is Assembly of God. And then he said, it was of no use. It was of no use. Yeah? And this is true. This is true. Salt is of no use. Um, unless, of course, you're going to use the bag of salt that's lost its flavour for a, a doorstop or something. And the third point he said in his message was, uh, he did mention the word cast out, but he never emphasised where. Cast out. Cast out. Never, never gave any explanation of that. And then the fourth point, he, he, he didn't mention the last part of being trampled on by mere sinful men and women. He slid over that real, real quickly. So an interesting interpretation from an Assembly of God Bible College pastor. Hey? Very interesting, don't you think? So I, I want to emphasise today. I, I want to be faithful to the Lord and I want to emphasise on this message. I want to emphasise on the scripture and this teaching of Christ in Matthew 5.13. And I want to start with, you are, you are the salt, but if the salt. You are the salt, but if. See, there, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Jude, there's a Jude, there's a Jude 5 there, isn't there? There's a Jude 5. Let's, let's yeah. just refresh. Let's go to Jude. Let's go to the writings of Jude. Hey, Jude. Don't let me down. We go to Jude, Jude 5, which says, But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Afterward. So they did believe. They, they were saved. Hey, they were were believing. I'm reminding you that though you once knew this, see, we can know things once, but do we know it today? Are we aware of this today? Are we going to accept this today? That you can be saved, you can be salt, you can be the salt of the earth, you you, you can be a disciple of the Christ. You can be a follower of the Christ, and you can you can be a preacher of, of the Christ. 
But where are we today? Where are we today? Where's our walk today? Where's our heart today? Are we virgin fools? Are we the ones that um, have just, you know, come to Jesus and been washed white as snow, and then we just go down the road believing this garbage doctrine of absolute predestination, salvation by election? Are we of that uh, people, or are we of the people who believe the teaching of Jesus? We believe the doctrine of Jesus. Hey? And then he opened his mouth and he taught them. Hey? Mm -hmm. He taught them. <laughs> and he's telling these disciples where all the blessings come from. Hey? Blessed are you. Hey? Blessed are the poor who are in the spirit. Hey? But the poor who aren't in the spirit and they're in the flesh, uh, the kingdom is not theirs. They don't have anything, anything at all. You know, the poor are actually more blessed than the rich because the poor, it's too easy for them to enter into the kingdom because they ain't got nothing. But the rich, it's like a camel trying to make its way through a darning needle eye. Hey? <laughs> That's very difficult, isn't it? Eh? Oh, hallelujah. So, he went on to say that uh, um, here you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses, if the salt loses its flavour, how? Even, even the Lord wants to know how. Hey? The Lord doesn't even know this by the looks of it. How in the world can it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing. Hey? And here's this Assembly of God um, pastor, Bible college, Bible college certificate, paper, car, uh, paper pastor. And he was ministering uh, uh, that, oh, you, you can't be used in the ministry. He didn't, he didn't have enough love to tell the people that they were going to be damned. Because Why? Because it's a great insult. It's the greatest insult that Jesus could have that we would put our, our flesh life, we would put our lives, we would put our, our human relations, relationships before him. There's no, because we're putting creation before the creator. And, and, and Romans 1, 1 to 18 tells us that, doesn't they? They worship the creation rather than the creator. And where that we see them. We see them out there watching the whales. Oh, they worship the big things. They worship these whales. Look, I see it on TV. I see, you know, they got the whale watching time and, and the people are buzzing around in the boat going, Oh, oh. And you hear a bit of a, oh. Oh, fifty dollars a head, oh, and a meal not worth eating to go with it later, oh, and then say, oh look, he flipped his tail, oh, they worship the mongrel thing, <laughs> hey, worship it, worship in creation, hey, and the Lord said he'll hand them over to all that they want if that's what they want, hey. They worship the creation. Oh, my wife. Oh, she's this and she's that. Oh, my husband, he's this and he's that. Oh, he's my rock, you know. He's, she's my rock. Oh, it's like this and it's like that. Hey, they had a thing on TV the other night about uh, Wally Lewis and they went to his house and, they, and he had a picture of himself uh, and the wall was bigger than the Taj Mahal as soon as you walk in and then they said that's a picture of me drinking tea there's a picture of me eating cake there's a picture <laughs> that's a picture of me over there blowing my nose and there's a picture of there me in a white shirt there's a picture of me in a purple shirt that's a picture of me um, waking up there's a picture of me going to sleep that's a picture of me 
and it was heartbreaking. Right? All I thought to myself was, don't go breaking my heart. I couldn't if I tried. It, and I, it couldn't help but think of Romans, you know, the scripture come flooding in. They worship the creation, and now they're putting up a statue of him now. Uh, not of him, of well, um, his mate, um, uh, Mel, Mel Meninga's going up there now, and they're going to worship him now. Well, the thing is, it's fulfilling scripture. That's the main thing, isn't it? The main thing is that we see that Jesus is the truth, and that every man and woman be a liar. Eh? Mm -hmm. Christians, Christian, you are. There's no question about it. And when we follow Jesus and, and we're in love with Jesus and on fire for Jesus, you're the salt of the earth. We're going to look at that word salt in a minute. Uh, but, oh, there's that big but again. But if, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's good for nothing. Not just not for ministering, good for nothing. And then he said, nothing but, right? nothing but, to be thrown out, thrown out, thrown out, and trampled, hey, okay, trampled underfoot of the sinner. The Lord doesn't want anything to do with people who uh, have another love. You know, are you with me? Yes. We we must have Him. We've been betrothed to one husband. His name is Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? His name is Jesus. I mean, this is dovetailing with Sunday's message, uh, Virgin Fools. Had no oil, had no joy, didn't they? And, and then they're running around like a chook with his head cut off saying, give us some of your joy. You know what I mean? That's just stupid, isn't it? That's how insane they were. They just let the whole life that they had with Jesus dry up. Hey? They just let it dry up. They had no joy and they wanted some joy because if they rolled up at the door and they didn't have the joy on the face, well, the groom would know straight away, oh, they don't love me. You know what I mean? It's sort of like, you know, uh, it's sort of like your wife, um, your wife uh, comes to the door and you open the door and, uh, and you look out um, and she's there, you know, with a look on her face to kill and... The groom's there all smiling and say, Oh, I thought you were happy to see me. Not really. <laughs> you know, not really. Should I be? You come too soon, didn't you, you naughty boy Jesus? I'm not ready yet. Hello? I'm not ready. Maybe later, as Esau said, I'm ready now. I'm ready to take my birthright back again. Eh? I'm ready now. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> well, it just so happens that it's too late, baby. Now it's too late. Eh? We really did try to make it. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, so dovetailing, and then dovetailing again with the, uh, Brother Donald Wilson, our dear brother up on the island of Bribery, uh, bringing to mind 2005, uh, once saved but lost, all coming together within three, four days from different Areas of, of of the globe, hey, eh? of the of the country, absolutely beautiful. It's the spirit of the Lord, spirit of the Lord. The baton, the Holy Ghost baton of, of, of Pastor William Wilson, Brother Donald's dad, made it to the shores of Australia, hey, eh? by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Glory to the Lamb on high, hey. Eh? And Brother William Wilson used to walk with Smith Wigglesworth. Wonderful. Yeah. So we're going to look at salt today. We'll get into the message now. Salt, S-A-L-T. 
you are the salt of the earth. He's saying to his disciples, you're the ones that are going to be um, saved. You're going to be saved. You are. You, my disciples will be saved from the wrath to come and from hell fire eternal. That's what salty people, hey? We are the salt. We are the saved ones. We are the ones that are going to be spared from the wrath of God, which is going to be poured out full strength. Hey? He has a cup, the scripture says in the book of Revelation, a cup. He has a cup that's filling up, a cup of his anger. And it's going to overflow. But we'll be spanned. Hey? He will come with a shout, the voice of an archangel. The trumpet of God will sound. And the dead in the graves who are alive to the Christ and died in a hot relationship with them will come out of the graves and take flight onto the cloud. Hallelujah. Hey? And then those who are remaining on the earth and are alive, they remain on the earth and they're alive to the Christ, have a hot relationship with him, then they will go up. We will be... We are the the the, the salty spared people, eh? Hey? Spared saltings. Glory, hallelujah. Eh? Hey? We are the spared people. But there's a condition there, isn't there? But if the salty spared, eh? Hey? The salty spared people, if they cool off, if if they lose if they lose their taste for Jesus, you know, you know how like you lose your taste for a, you, know, you go down, you know, like you're eating chicken and you're eating beef and you're eating fish and you're eating, uh, you know, um, pheasant or whatever you're eating, and then you get seasons and times in your in your life in the flesh. As you walk on the earth, you just lay off the beef for a while, you know what I mean? You just lay off the red meats, or you lay off the... And you're sort of not drawn to it anymore? Well, there's a lot of people like that uh, who've come to the Lord, and, and they think, oh, you know, yeah, I met Jesus a long time ago, but, you know what I mean? But, you know, I realise that I don't have to pressure, you know, I don't have to live under pressure and... I don't have to uh, strain things, you know. I was excited when I first come to the Lord, but I'm mature now. I'm more mature. And, um, you know, I sort of have a more uh, laid-back relationship with the Lord. And yeah, sometimes I, I feel, I feel, sometimes I feel, feeling. Sometimes I feel like going to church and sometimes I just don't. Sometimes I feel like, you know, giving but sometimes I just don't, you know what I mean? Like even though the Lord gives me breath every day, you know, that's all right, so I can be selfish, but uh, and live my selfish life. But I mean, it's okay, you know. Sometimes I don't really feel, you know, I don't really feel like, um, you know, going out and ministering. I don't really feel like doing this and feel, feel, and. Even though the scripture says faith has got nothing to do with feelings, but it doesn't really matter. Because George might tell me I'm on my way. And that's okay. I'm not where I used to be. I'm not where I should be. But that's alright, it's only sin. <laughs> the main thing is I'm on my way. And I'm not on his way. I'm on my way. Yeah? Saved of the earth. You are you are. You are saved. You are. When you're born again and, and washed in the blood and been under the water and and we're going on like a beauty, you know. But, you know, you get down the road 5, 10, 15 years, 20 years, what happens? What's the story? Are you the salt that's lost its favour? Yeah? Is, is that the situation? We can't, we can't treat Jesus lightly. We can't treat him like a, fl a, a passing fad. A fleeting uh, 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 fad in our life, you know. 
He is God. He will not have you worship in the creation, Auntie Betty or anyone else. He will not have you worshipping the things of the earth. So, salt, we are the saved. We are the ones that are going to be spared. S-A-L-T. We are the... Uh, uh, it's a very privileged scripture, this, you know. We are the Almighty's children. We are the children of the Almighty. A is for Almighty. We, we are the children of the Almighty. Can someone say amen? We're not just the, you know, trailer trash of the world. We're not the trailer trash in the spirit. We're royalty. We're, we're the Almighty, the children of the Almighty. And people get to know that we're the children of the Almighty and then they see us living the children of uh, the God of this world. We're living like the children of the God of this world. It brings um, great shame to the Lord. We crucify him afresh, don't we? When we live like the children of the devil and the children of the world. But people have known us. People have known us. They have known us as children of the Almighty. They've known us as, as the, the salty span. Eh? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's just go to the book of Revelation for a minute, please. Oh, hallelujah. Eh? Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Lamb of God. Sweet Lamb of God. Who died for us. Oh, sweet Lamb of God. Revelation 3. We're going to read the first verse. And to the pastor of the church in Sardis, hey? to the pastor of the church in Sardis, write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you're dead. They had a name. Hey? They were salty, spared. They were the salty span. He's writing to the pastor there, not the hierarchy, writing to the pastor, the head of that local church and that church. He's writing to them. He's not he, the angel of the church. Hey? I've never heard of an angel uh, uh, from heaven running a church. So it's talking about the pastor. You're listening. And another thing is, uh, Jesus won't, wouldn't be writing letters to an angel. He'd just give a, give a holler, you know. Holler for a marshal. <laughs> He'd just give the old Kiwi Bay job. Coo-wee! <laughs> Coo-wee! And the angel would come flying or running or whatever. Hey? You had that name, you're alive, see? Time and time and time again, we we render that filthy doctrine. It's a filthy devilish thing, that doctrine, absolute predestination, the Spurgeon teaching. Filthy thing it is. Filthy teaching that just opens the door to the corridors of hell. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. So we're, we're the children of the Almighty. Eh? We're the children of the Lord. We're the spared... Salty span. We're going to be spanned in the day of his wrath. Right? In, in, when his cup of uh, dissipation, when, when his cup is overflowing, right? when he gets angry. When God gets angry, it's not like a man getting angry. When he got angry in the Old Testament, what did he do? He wiped out two cities with fire and brimstone, flooded the earth, and left eight people, and he didn't send out a Joyce Meyer a life jacket with Joyce Meyer written on them and food parcels trying to salvage uh, what they can from the tsunami. That's man. That's not God. When God does a job, he does it. He don't salvage anything. He just wipes them out. Full stop, period. Right? He didn't send out, oh, I better send out some life bones. In the days of Noah, just so we can, we'll spare those who who would not quite drown yet. No, he just stood, he just sat on his throne and watched them all drown, screaming and howling, men, women, and children. 
We don't want to hear that. I know that. I know we want to hear the sunny Sunday sermons eh? that last for about 10 minutes and everyone's back in the pit of sin. Eh? Skyrockets in flight, afternoon delight. It's all like, shh. Oh, yeah. Boy, wasn't it good? Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, the music. Oh, yeah. What was the message? Oh, I can't remember, man, but it was good. <laughs> Skyrockets in flight, afternoon delight. No, we're not skyrockets in flight. We're, we're the spare saltings. We're, we're, the, <laughs> we're, the, <laughs> we're, we're the ones that are going to be spared. Saved. Saved from the wrath to come and hellfire. Eternal. Saved. Spared. Like a, a, a father spares his son. No. No. Like a father spares the son who serves him. Not his son. The son that serves him, the scripture says. Amen. So S A L T. L. We're 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 the loved. We're we're loved by God. Hey? We're loved by God. I mean, think about it. My beloved is mine and I'm my beloved. And the banner over me is love. We're loved by God. And then we turn around and cool off. We we just turn the relationship off. When we're ready. He said, no, 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 no. No. If you lose your flavour, you lose your taste for Jesus. Jesus is no longer number one. If that is the case, if that happens, we can expect to be cast out, thrown. Thrown. You know when you throw something? You ever seen a woman throw a plate at the husband or something? You know what I mean? You see in these old day, olden day movies and the woman throws the frying pan or... Something at the husband, there's, there's a bit of effort in there, you know what I mean? Throne. He didn't say, it doesn't read, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned? Uh, it is then, therefore, taken gently outside. <laughs> no, it's thrown out, thrown, thrown. You know what I mean? Like we're talking um, um, baseball here, you know what I mean? We're talking baseball, American baseball. Thrown out. But this is not the Jesus we're hearing, is it? This is not the Jesus in the churches today. This is not the Jesus at the access vans, you know, shoveling out those um, four and twenty pines, <laughs> four and twenty blackbirds. You know what I mean? Shoveling out these, these, these sausage scissors. scissors, scissors, scissors. Hey, that's that's not the message, is it? You know why? Because it, it's not the teaching of Jesus. Hey, and he opened his mouth and taught them. What did he teach them? This is the doctrine of Christ. This is his teaching. This is not my teaching. This is the teaching of Jesus. Thrown, thrown out. Hallelujah. Thrown out. What does Hebrews two three say? Hebrews 2.3 says very clearly, if we neglect, hey, let's have a look, Hebrews 2.3, and, and, and out of the mouths of two or more, every word is confirmed. Hey? Out of the mouths of two or more. Hebrews 2.3, we got Paul here again, agreeing with Matthew. Hebrews 2.3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. How are we going to escape? If we neglect, hey? If we neglect the same players, hey? How in the world will we escape? We cannot escape. We are the spared people. We are the children of the Almighty, the Almighty's children. Hey? We're loved by him. We're loved. And after all this, we're going back to Scripture again. How, what, what, what more could I have done for my vineyard? Hey? What more could I have done? Hey? We, we, we've been spared. Hey? 
we 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 become the children of the Almighty, and He makes it clear to us that He loves us. We're loved by God, not humans, by God. And then we lose our taste for Him. He becomes something that is second, third, fourth, fifty-fourth best. In our lives, he becomes something on the side, someone we call on when we need to be cashed up, someone we call on when we need uh, our um, boils to be healed, someone to call on when we need uh, all the drama in the house sorted out. That's all he is? Come on, we've been betrothed to one husband, brethren. Someone say amen today. It's a old team. Hey? We're testimonies. T S A L T testimonies of God. We're walking the earth as testimonies. Hey? We're living testimonies. We're out there testifying about Christ. And then next minute we're giving the okay to the devil. And the Lord looks down and says, Hey, have you lost your taste or something? You lost your mind? Have you forgotten you're a spared, uh, salty spread? Have you forgotten you're the Almighty's? Have you forgotten that I have loved you so much I delivered you? Have you forgotten? Hey, have you forgotten? You're my testimony. You're testifying how great I am. You're testifying how wonderful I am and how loving I am, how merciful I am and how kind I am. What else can he do except throw us out? Hey, we're of no use. We're of no use. Hey? We're not showing gratitude because we're spared. We're not showing and demonstrating that uh, we're the Almighty's. They just relate us back to some human. They don't see the Almighty on us. They don't see the Almighty hand on us. We're just They just look at us and think, oh, you know, that's just Mr. Jones' son. Hey? Well, that, not, that, that's the child of God, that one. Hey? Glory to the Lamb. <laughs> yeah, out there proclaiming, man. And they overcame the devil and were spared by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb and what Jesus done at the cross and they didn't love their life until the day they died because uh, their life was lived for someone else and that someone else is the one that died for them upon the tree. Can you say amen? So we live for him who died for us, the cruel death upon the tree. We live for him. We're no longer our own. We live for him. Hey? It's not skyrockets in flight a afternoon delight. Hey? It's it, it's full throttle all the way, hot for Jesus. Because if you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. He said, "I would prefer that you were cold and you never ever knew me. I would prefer that you were cold. In other words, cold is you don't know him. You know when you walk down the street." Walk on by. No. <laughs> when you see me walking down the street. <laughs> da, 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 da. Walk on by. You know, and you're cold. You're cold. The people out there, you don't know them, do you? Don't tell me you do know everyone in town. I don't. In a city of 1.8, 1.9 million. You're not hot. You know, you're not, you're not warm to them, are you? Like you don't know them. Yeah. You don't know them. So you're, you're cold to them. They're distant to you, aren't you? That's what he's saying. I prefer that you, you you didn't know me than to have known me and become lukewarm. Lukewarm is losing your flavour. The salt you are, but. You are, but. Yes, you, I know people that have been saved and they've met Jesus. And they, they speak with tongues. That's one of the gifts. And they had a bit of mercy and kindness and generosity happening. But their love for Jesus is cold. They're not saved. 
because we trace it all the way back to the new agreement and covenant. We're to love him first. That's the first and that's the only great commandment we've ever had given to us as Gentile believers. The other commandment is a command, but it's not the great one. There's a great command. And there's a great commission. And there's a great reward. Huh? And how great thou art. Come what may. Keep him on the top of the list. No matter who. They, look, look, humans are going to get nasty. They're going to start gnawing on you, you know. They're going to start biting the heels. Piranaing you. Verbally. You know what I mean? They're going to get upset with you. Oh, don't listen to him. Don't listen to that bloke. He's crazy. Once saved, always saved. Just say the prayer, sit in the chair and go to heaven. You can't forfeit your salvation. That's rubbish. He doesn't take away what he gives. Jesus ain't no Indian giver. It wasn't even the Indians that broke the, the treaty. It was the white man. But they just twisted that and lied too and said, oh, yeah, it's no Indian giver. You're giving it and you're taking it back now. No, it was the white, the Buffalo Bills who broke the treaties, come charging into Cochise's camp and, and, and Geronimo and they just let fly with the spears, you know, and the arrows. <laughs> you know, going back to those uh, old Lone Ranger and Tonto days, you know what I mean? Me and my brother used to like the old Lone Ranger. Ooh, who was that masked man? Tonto and Kimisabi. Oh, exciting it was. Hey, we'd sit there transfixed with our arrowed biscuits and the milk. <laughs> yeah. ah! Next minute, my brother would elbow me <laughs> and let it be on in the lounge. Ooh, ah, uh. wait on, wait on. <clears throat> Next minute, bang, goes one of the classes or cups. Then mama come out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whoo! Glory! Ah! <laughs> ah! Salty spread! I think I might call this message the salty spread. What do you reckon? <laughs> Don't you think it'd be awesome? Don't you think that'd be awesome? And the joy's all over Brother Paul then. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's spared. He's, hey? Oh, look, the joy's all over him. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Woo! The salty spared. Oh, man. you got to get any better than that. Hey? Woo! As Brother Russell used to say, P -p Pastor, I, uh, I still believe... <laughs> Oh, I still believe, he said, I still, I still believe, he, he rose is a better song. I still believe that. I still believe that, Pastor. <laughs> Salty spread, oil of joy. Hey? Oil of joy for the salty spread. Holy Ghost, joy. Joy unspeakable. Filled. Brimmed, brimmed with glory. <laughs> Fresh anointing. There's a sweet anointing in this place. And I know it's the presence of my God. There's a sweet anointing here today, brethren. Amen. Uh, provided for the Almighty's children. Provided for the salty span. Eh? <laughs> provided by the God who loves us. Because we're out there testifying. We're, we're testifying of his of his wonderful love and and patience and joy and peace hey? he is my peace 
He has broken down every wall. He is my peace. Oh, he is my peace. How blessed we are to have Brother Paul Horvath with us from Slovakia. That he came all the way from Mount Ison just to hear this message. Isn't it wonderful? How blessed. How blessed. <laughs> let's let's give Brother Paul a hand today. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's hear it. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for our precious brother. And everybody said, and amen, and amen.